it is said that the world is a global village and the understanding is that no matter where you find yourself the world is connected in various ways that makes it much more seamless to reach different parts of the world and the effects of what happens in one country or in a specific part of the world can have consequences for others in different parts and we see that even more in some of the social economic uh, engagements across the world and how interlinked we are notwithstanding our geographical locations and that is the more reason why today's chapter is very important in helping us to understand how our world is changing and why it is important to understand the various changes that are happening all across the globe and all around us. Today's chapter is chapter 8 of the book, The Principles and Benefits of Change by Dr. Maus Muro. And the theme is Worldwide Tides of Change. Worldwide Tides of Change. With the sub theme, the sub theme, 10 areas converging to transform our world. In today's session, we will try to reflect on these 10 areas that are outlined in the chapter and more specifically to see why they are important, especially in our world today, in this current um, times that we find ourselves where things are even moving at a more rapid rate than when uh, probably this book was written. So the chapter begins with a quote from Robert Lois Stevenson. And it says that wherever we are, it is but a stage on the way to somewhere else. And whatever we do, however well we do it, it is only a preparation to do something else that shall be different. And this quote captures a lot and it, it, it looks to the essence of change which we have discussed in previous uh, reflections in previous episodes. The core in this quote is that no matter where you find yourself right now, even today, whatever you did during the course of today is in preparation for things that will be happening tomorrow and in the years to come. And so whatever we find ourselves doing, we have to bear in mind that what we do today has implications for what we will be doing tomorrow and who will become tomorrow. And so the present and whatever engagements we have is preparing us for what is ahead that we do not know about. And so wherever we are, it is but a stage on the way to somewhere else. If it is work related, whatever job you find yourself in, whatever roles you are playing, the roles you are playing are in preparation for other roles that may be coming your way later tomorrow. And if you have this understanding, it is what will guide you to equip yourself and make sure that you make the necessary upgrades, learn all that you can, gain all the skills that you can, gain the mastery that will make you better prepared for the higher responsibilities of tomorrow that may come your way. So whatever we do, however well we do it, it is only a preparation to do something else that shall be different. It may be within the same area of study. It may be in the same area of work. It may be within the same jurisdiction. But at the end of the day, the things that we'll be doing tomorrow in the future are going to be different and we will need the preparation of today to meet the expectations of tomorrow. And this gets us into why 
we must appreciate the tides of change that are happening all across the world. And more significantly in this present time is the change relating to technology and the social media space. There's a lot that is going on with a click of a button. You can do a lot when it comes to the internet and the world of social media. And the progression that we find is as captured in the beginning uh, portion of the chapter, a reflection of the unfolding of God's ultimate will for the earth as the one who created the heavens and the earth from the beginning, the one who gave charge to man to till the earth, to subdue the earth, to take dominion. God is the one that has set the world on course to his ultimate uh, destination. And so it says that the world of change we are experiencing today can be understood in the context of the unfolding of God's ultimate will for the earth. I believe there's a providential order in the generational progression of humankind. So right from the days of Pluto, so Socrates, Aristotle, all the ancient times through the days past in you can talk of Abraham's time, Moses's time, in the times of Jesus, the apostles, right until today. All the different changes that have happened, all the progress and all the dynamics that have gone on in terms of the progression of mankind, it is all in line with what God's ultimate will for the earth is. We may not understand it in its fullness because we are limited when it comes to understanding God's ultimate um, will for the earth. And so in his providential order, we see progression when it comes to the human uh, uh, world. And that is why it is important, as we mentioned in one of our previous episodes, that we keep in line with the Almighty God, because He is the only constant change. That is the only constant in a world that keeps changing. The only constant that is able to determine how the order of generational progression is. And once we can be able to rely on Him as the constant then we will benefit from change even in this life and the life to come. And it says that some of the changes we are experiencing around the world is motivated by the designs of evil men and involves much pain in people's life. And this is something that we have established, especially when we reflected through the book, Understanding Your Potential and how the fall of man through the sin of Adam in the Garden of Eden brought to us pain through the, 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 the fall of man, the, the need to express all the potential that God has hidden in us became one that ha has been tainted and the devil is, is, is working out ways that will limit the expression of our potential. And all of this is captured in the evil that we see all around us. And so there are a lot of challenges, there are a lot of troubles all across the world from disasters here and there, pain, economic failures, and a lot of things that are the design of the devil and men who have decided to frustrate the, the lives of others, evil men who have frustrated many lives because of their evil intentions. And so it is important to understand that in working out his purposes, God does not cause this evil. Rather, he uses all things, including the evil that is happening all across our world, both the good and the bad, for the purpose of moving the world toward his ultimate intent. So we see in the account concerning Joseph, where his brothers sold him into slavery. They, they got frustrated with all his 
um, dreams he was having and all that he he was saying concerning how you know god god was going to make him great and all he they, they were frustrated by the fact that this young boy had certain confidence in his potential and how far god would take him and they sold him into slavery the 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 thoughts that they were doing him harm but in genesis 50 19 to 20 where joseph had now become become the prime minister of egypt after interpreting the the, the dreams of of pharaoh he, he said something very instructive he says that don't be afraid i am in, am i in the place of god you intended to harm me but god intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives so he went through the house of potiphar and the challenge that came with him and he being thrown into prison for what he did not do and staying in prison and being forgotten by the cup bearer uh, and and the, the the other gentleman that he had interpreted their dreams and was hoping that you know he, he would get out soon if they remember him but all through that at the end of the day god demonstrated that the bad the ugly the things that the world considers to be rubbish he is able to take and make something good out of the bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above comes from the the, the, the father the one who gives without measure so god intended for Joseph's good, all the evil that his brothers were planning for him. And that is something that when we understand can help us to make progress and stay steadfast in an evil world that is controlled by evil men. And there are some fears of transition that we see concerning our world. And these fears, we would quickly go through them. The first is the generational transition where you have uh, men and women who have um, led, you know, um, and held the fort in various aspects of society from the business environment, ministry, family, politics, uh, leadership uh, in organizations and all that who are passing on the baton. Um, giving giving uh, way for a different generation of younger people to take over from them in this kind of transition you'd find that there are a lot of changes that happen so passing on from the old guard to a young you know generation we see a lot of changes that happen and if you find yourself either at the point where you are transitioning or trans, 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 uh, transferring um, whatever authority, whatever um, sphere of influence you have to a new generation, or you are the other end where you are receiving from an older generation, it is important for you to understand what is required so that you'll be able to do as is expected or as is expedient. How will you handle this change? Do you find yourself reacting or responding to it your response to generational transition is vital to carrying forward god's work in the world so if you are receiving from an earlier generation the baton of leadership how are you going to handle it so that whatever good was achieved whatever exploits that were done you will not be the one that brings stagnation to them but you will rather carry them forward the second fear of transition is the political transition and this is in the area of power and we see from across the international uh, perspective to national levels various kinds of changes that happen a lot of trouble a lot of coups here and there uh, in these recent times across um, some african countries and we see power struggles political power struggles on the international front as well 
a lot of challenges coming up as a result and if you do not pay attention to some of these things that happen across the globe maybe you feel that you you are just in your little corner somewhere it, 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 it's it's something that will be to your disadvantage because understanding the transitions that are happening in the political atmosphere is very critical it helps you to also know what you need to do as a person that can contribute to to ensuring that your future is secure and your family or whichever group of people you are you are connected to in terms of influence are sustained so it says that seeking to understand the emerging political world and the ways in which god is working in this realm is also crucial to being a participant in his purposes at this time first chronicles 12 verse 32 tells us how 200 leaders from the tribe of Issachar, the sons of Issachar, they understood the times, the seasons that Israel was in, and they knew what Israel needed to do at that time. And so if you do not understand the, the transitionings that are happening on the political front, both at the international level, the national level, the community levels, and you are not interested in all that is happening, you are um, keeping yourself uh, from one important area of change that can affect you as an individual and your generation. The third key area of transition across the world that you need to pay attention to or be interested in is the economic transition. And there are a lot of challenges in the economies of the world. Um, in, in the recent years of COVID-19 hitting the world and many deaths being recorded, a lot of things brought to a standstill. The, the shock ha has been massive and many countries are, are reeling, you know, the, the after effects of this um, serious uh, pandemic. And so the economic atmosphere has been so infected and that that is leading to a lot of difficulties for many and if you find yourself within a jurisdiction where the economic environment is polluted and there's a lot of hardship it is up to you to know what you need to do and how you can uh, even make progress within that environment within that environment how will you relate to the economic reality of today's world while some people may try to deny or ignore it responding to it wisely and constructively as you ultimately trust god for your provisions will enable you to benefit during our complex and uncertain economic times and in in ghana where i am from you'd you'd find that there are a lot of you know challenging situations that we find ourselves in and it's 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 only by the grace of god and by determination the diligence of hard work that many are surviving and so it is by understanding the economic reality of our world today both internationally and nationally that you'll be able to position yourself well to know how you can put to use some of the skills that you have, some of the knowledge that you have in order to make a living and thrive even in the uncertain economic uh, challenges. The fourth key area of transition that we, may, we, 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 we need to pay attention to is the religious transition. And this is in regard to the the strongholds of religion all across the world and so from christianity to islam to uh, buddhism hinduism many kinds of religions all across the world and each experiencing various uh, uh, changes here and there and within the christian fraternity a lot of things are happening there, there, there are stands that some 
uh, Christian groups have taken that others, you know, uh, dissociate themselves from in, in specific areas when it comes to um, issues of sexual orientation and a number of key internationally um, 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 heated issues you'd find that religion plays a key role in determining how these issues are either resolved or progress is made in those particular instances so having a realistic view of the shifting religious affiliations and how people are taking you know the opportunity to move into different um, religions and how these religions are also influencing individual lives and national lives is very critical it's very important knowing the facts will enable you it says to understand the state of the world today and give you insight into the natures of some of the cultural changes and clashes that are occurring the 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 the, the knowledge that we we have of the religious atmosphere within our own nation and across the the world is very key especially if you are a religious person and you are affiliated to a particular religion then the, the dynamics that are happening here and there is very key. The, just within the Christian fraternity, there are a lot of um, um, backlashes here and there. There are people that are standing against other people because, you know, their teachings are, are seen to be contrary to, to, to what the scriptures say. And all of these are important changes that we need to brace ourselves for. The fifth key area of transition that we need to pay attention to is the spiritual transition. And this is different from the religious transition. And Dr. Miles gives some um, understanding in here. It says that it is necessary to make a distinction between religious and spiritual transition in the world because spiritual transition involves direct divine activity direct divine activity meaning that when it comes to the, the the spiritual transition it is concerning how god is working through the spirit the holy spirit in making changes or affecting our world in various ways so while religious transitions may uh, be influenced by human activity and human agenda spiritual transition is connected to the almighty god and the work of his spirit all across the world and so it says the spiritual transition seems to be from north to south from old to young from the known to the unknown and from the expected to the un unexpected so there are lots that are happening when it comes to the spiritual changes across the world and many people are waking up to the reality of being sensitive to things beyond what is physical because this life is not all about what we see you know all that we see is not all that there is and so people are rising up to 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 prayer whether whether they are affiliated to a particular religion or not people are becoming more spiritually sensitive they are taking a stance to find meaning to find purpose for their lives and that understanding that there's something that they can live for that goes beyond what is physical is important and a knowledge of the activity of god's spirit it says is vital to your participation in his work in the hearts of men women and children around the world you understand the ways in which he's drawing people to himself in various nations in your own nation do you appreciate how god is working on the hearts of many people around you including yourself such that he's drawing us to himself through the happenings all across the world the good the bad the ugly god even in all of these he's, he's working things out to get us to know him more and more 
he causes all things he says to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose so god through the various generations of time is always doing something with the world and this he's doing by his spirit who keeps um, everything sustained by the power of god's word the seed area of transition or tide of change is concerning social and cultural transition and this area uh, of transition concerns social cultural practices uh, there are some practices in certain parts of the world that have become outmoded um, things are changing um, the, 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 the people that hitherto didn't even have, you know, uh, some light, you know, in, in, in terms of intellectual capacity, they are getting those amenities, education reaching them and all that. So the average individual of today's world is much more sophisticated and knowledgeable about the world than the average individual of 50 years ago and this is especially true because of the social media you know um, generation so to speak that we find ourselves so even the the the, the one in an, a rural community somewhere in the village who has access to a mobile phone will have access to information that uh, many from many years ago uh, many centuries ago wouldn't have had if they found themselves within the same uh, communities. So how would you respond to the social and cultural transitions taking place in the world today? Are you comfortable interacting with other cultures? Sometimes you move to a different country, you move to a different community and you get the cultural shock where certain things you were exposed to within your own um, culture are so different from this are you able to make the necessary adjustments to your own schemas so that you can now integrate the new things you are meeting the new people and be able to um, live a, a cordially with them how much do you know about the groups of people who are different from you whether in your own nation or in another nation for some of us for some people it is difficult for you to appreciate the fact that others are different their ideologies their belief systems the things that have become their their value system is different from you because they have a different cult cultural context and a different upbringing and so if you don't have this appreciation of the social and cultural transitions that are happening you will not be able to partake in god's purposes for the world today because of your ignorance or unwillingness to accept the, the, the reality of cultural change. So now we, we, we look at the, the, the 10 key areas of change that our world um, is experiencing and how all of these are coming together to affect us in very significant ways. And these 10 key areas, we have globalization, we have information, communication, mobilization, cultural diversification, mergers and networking, longevity of life, technology, political and religious transition, and rapid transformation. And for our focus, we would look at globalization, information, and then we'll look at technology. And when it comes to globalization, we hear of the age of um, globalization what according to dr maus he's referring to is economic markets and competition as well as to the social impact of the international economy on people's life and as i mentioned from the beginning we say that the world is a global village and what happens in one country has implications for another country and so whether it is positive or negative wherever we find ourselves in there is a certain impact of international you know um, activities on us 
and when it comes to the economic atmosphere the world market and what is happening there it affects us all across the globe so you may be in ghana but what is happening on the stock market uh, is affecting you in terms of pricing the 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 depreciation of the ghana cd against the dollar against the british pound and all that has effects on you that are indirect and also direct in certain ways so the economic atmosphere across the globe because of globalization and the interlinked nature of our world within africa within west africa within asia within america all across various continents and intercontinental uh, engagements we see how many things are affected because of the markets of the world and it's it's interesting it's interesting how uh, a certain war in one country can distort you know the, the economic activities of another nation and you 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 would find that a country that is maybe the leading producer of a particular commodity if there's a damage to that country the rippling effects are seen all across the globe all across the world especially for countries that rely on that particular nation for those products so what does the age of globalization mean for you it impacts the goods your nation sells in world markets and the way the goods you buy through the international trade it affects the balance of trade in the world and the trade surplus or deficits of your nation it may also impact your livelihood suppose you are a business person who used to compete with a company across the street or across the state now you may be competing for business with someone across the world because now you have to deal with you know competitors beyond your geographical location and that is more especially because of using technology and you know advertising your your produce for to, to an international audience through social media through facebook through through instagram through uh, twitter which is now x and all that are you prepared to respond to that change with practical strategies and plans so that you remain relevant even as the world continues to go through the the, the process and the speed of globalization and the next key area of change which is important is the age of information we find ourselves in a world now that information is all over it's like an overload of information you need you need any kind of information on the net as long as you have data to search you will find it and artificial intelligence ai now has even you know taken the world to a, a higher degree a higher level chat gpt you search you you type in an instruction and you get a lot of you know information you you are sitting there and you need an idea you go in there and say give me ideas for a birthday party and you get a lot of ideas a lot of you know um suggestions it's an information world an age of information and this has good implications and bad implications it's like a two-edged sword and it says that what does the age of information mean for you on the one hand you have a remarkable opportunity to educate yourself there's a lot to learn on youtube you have a lot of you know videos on different topics including things that are basic how to do them and complex things that you may not understand from from your own you know formal education sometimes there are certain videos on topics that you listen to and you feel like all your years spent in the university it is now that you get that concept better in a five minute video so that there's a remarkable opportunity to educate yourself 
and enjoy a wide exposure to knowledge, news, the arts, and so forth. However, <coughs> we also need discernment. On the other hand, you will need discernment. For example, although a wide variety of information is available through the internet, it cannot always be verified as accurate. And so, because the world is filled with so much information, you need to be careful, you need to be able to discern. And that is what will guard against being misinformed. Through the, the media, the media space, there are news information um, concerning certain events, concerning people, news that come and then later we find out that they are false news. People are taking advantage of the search for information to, 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 to spew out wrong data, wrong information, and, you know, just for, 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 for their own uh, personal gain. People are sending out um, um, information and knowledge that in itself is destructive. But because it helps them to gain money from, you know, their social engagements and all that, they, they keep pushing it out there. So we need to be very careful because the, the, the fact that there's a lot of information around does not mean that every information is relevant or necessary for us. Then we have the age of communication. So the speed of internet increased, calls increased. It's like everything is now fast paced. You you want to send an email, you are gone. You, you, you want to place a call to somebody in a different country. So long as you have the, the needed airtime, you are good to go. If, if, if you don't want to make an international call, the, the, the Zoom platform, uh, Google Meets, uh, Microsoft Teams, and all that, there are a lot of platforms that are now available, even on the social media space, going live and having, you know, live conversations, you know, people tuning in and live chats and all that. All this is in our current world. And it is helpful, but once again, it is important to pay attention to discernment because that is very important. And because of the um, proliferation of all these social media spaces for ease of communication and the sophisticated, you know, um, technology for communicating across companies, communicating across various organizations and individuals. There's a lot of insecurity, cyber crime, you know, um, at its high, a lot of cyber bullying and many things are happening. People hacking into others' information and leaking the uh, private data and information of others via the online space. All of these are, you know, challenges that come with the age of communication and social media and so although we can take advantage of all these changes that are happening we also need to be careful not to find ourselves being bullied into um, 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 territories that will, will jeopardize our future the final bit or area of change that we want to look at is the age of technology the age of technology which ties in uh, with with the age of information and the age of communication and <laughs> the, the 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 mobile devices that we use all the time every almost every time there are changes that are happening to them the the updates that come with devices the computers the laptops the iPods um, all the changes that are happening in this age of technology are very rapid you have mobile um, um, brands you know coming up with newer 
versions or updates every other time the competition is so high for iPhones for Samsung and all the brands that you can think about before you know it there's a new release and people are craving the new release and all of this change with its benefits have also consequences that may be negative to us so whatever your age or situation the challenge is to allow technology to benefit you which is key so it says that whatever your age or situation the challenge is to allow technology to benefit you not control you so that a mobile device with all the things it can do including helping you to have access to information and ease communication you let it benefit you rather than control you whether as a student as a worker whoever it is technology should be used to proper benefit rather as than as you know a master that controls you and affects you in ways that are negative are you in charge of the technology you use or is it in charge of you critical question to ask yourself do you always need to be online on TikTok, on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Thread, all over the place? Do you always need to be online or talking on the phone to someone? Or can you put those things aside when you need to attend to necessary or important issues? Do you avoid all technology or are you willing to see its positive contributions? There are some people that see technology to be evil. There are some people whose religious or cultural orientation make them despise everything technology. They see it as, you know, antichrist or they see it as something, you know, that is evil. But that should not be the case. If you find yourself in a place where you think technology is evil, then you are not ready to make yourself relevant in the changing scenes or tides of life. Because technology is a key component of all the changes that are happening, all the transitions that are happening. And if you don't adjust, not in the sense of making technology become an evil in your life, but rather using it to benefit yourself and make yourself better. You know, it's 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 soothing. It is it is beautiful to know that you can take advantage of artificial intelligence to ease your work. How comforting it is to know that if you are confused and you don't know what to do, at least you can have a chatbot that can tell you a few things that you you may want to consider. You want to send an email and you don't know how to start. You get an instruction given. And then you have some ideas on how to start. All these helps to make life seamless. So we must discover how to respond efficiently and wisely in this age of technology. Whatever your age or situation, once again, the challenge is to allow technology to benefit you and not control you. So there are others that we find in the chapter I think I would want to end on those four key areas of transition, four key areas of change that our world is experiencing and will continue to experience. So the chapter ends with this quote, he that will not apply new remedies must expect new evils for time is the greatest innovator. And before that, it says those who fail to understand the times and seasons and don't discover how to participate in them will themselves find will find themselves irrelevant in our changing world. Very important. Those who fail to understand the times and seasons and don't discover how to participate in them will find themselves irrelevant in our changing world. There are some people that were not able to cope with a change or transition from typewriters to modern computers. They didn't learn, they didn't educate themselves, they didn't engage in professional upgrade that would help them to keep 
in, 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 in line with the changes that were happening. When COVID came, a lot of people moved to the online space. A lot of companies, organizations working from home and online. If you didn't make the needed adjustment, you become irrelevant in that change that was happening. And so it is important for us to understand the changes that are happening in our world and make the needed adjustments that will keep us being relevant as we fulfill God's purpose for our lives and unveil our potential to the maximum. So yes, it ends, he that will not apply new remedies must expect new evils for time is the greatest innovator and this is from francis barkan and it's 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 as simple as it gets if you do not make yourself open to change if you do not make yourself open to the new technologies that are coming the changing political scenes the changing issues when it comes to religion the changing issues when it comes to information comes to communication technology <laughs> you would find yourself in a whole mess because the world will leave you behind and you would you would find that all the times that you have failed to keep up all the times that you have failed to educate yourself and make yourself aware of the changes that are happening so that you know what to do you kept yourself in a place where time bullied you into dysfunction. The sons of Issachar once again it says in First Chronicles 12 32 that they understood the times and they knew what Israel needed to do. What is happening in your community? What is happening in your nation? Have you focused your attention on understanding all these things that are happening? Are happening? Do you listen to the news to understand what is going on? If you are not, you need to make the changes that are necessary. Because a lot is happening across the world and it is affecting many people in various ways, including you. If you have an understanding of the changing tides across the world, it will help you to keep being relevant in God's ultimate plan for the world and for you. Thank you so much for joining in today's lesson, today's reflection. I hope it has been useful and I hope to see you in the next episode. Until then, stay safe and always remain a blessing. Bye-bye.